Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Frostbites Gaming Experience, part 45 of the Pokemon Emerald walkthrough, where, yeah, um, we're pretty much done and we're doing all of the extra stuff, but in the course of the actual game game, I mean, you saw it in the last part, we got the end. We did it. We beat the Elite Four. We beat the champion, albeit it was a little bit rocky on how I did it because I just, again, I did not really want to have to grind to go against them, but what can you do? But yeah, everything else after this is going to be everything extra. It's almost like when you first beat the Elite Four in a Pokemon Gold, or in any Pokemon game really, after you beat the Elite Four, then suddenly it's like, well, there's a little bit more that you can actually go out of your way to do. And that's what one of the things I do like about the Pokemon games is that when it's done, it's not really done. They still give you some other things to do. So if you are one of those people that really want to go out of your way and complete the entirety of the Pokedex, it's not like you have to do it before you go out and beat the Elite Four. Once you're done beating the Elite Four, it's like, all right, that's just the first step. Now you got everything else open to you that you can do. You can finish off the Pokedex. You can go get all the legendary Pokemon. You can do all of these things. And it, I don't know. It's just it's stuff that I personally do not do. I will go out of my way and like do the legendaries. And if, you know, if I want to make a specific team, I'll go ahead and do that. Again, I've already said it before. I don't really care about the Pokedex. I just like recently decided, hey, you know, I kind of want to catch all 151 Pokemon in Generation 1. And that was like about a year or so ago. And already that kind of died out because of the fact that, oh, I'm already doing Pokemon for YouTube. I really don't want to do Pokemon on the side, especially when it's mostly just to complete a Pokedex. That's not really going to matter in the future other than just to say, hey, I actually finally went on my way to do it. So it's not really something that I actually care about all that much. But one of the first things that you do get access to is being able to now go on a boat finally. So just like within Generation 2 when you could finally sail across to the Kanto region on the SSN, uh, you can now sail across just the Hoenn region themselves with the SS, whatever the hell this one is particularly called. I don't even remember. It doesn't even matter. It's basically the exact same thing. You go on it. There's a couple trainers you can fight. I think in this case, like, if I remember correctly with the SSN, I don't, like, there was something extra you had to do. Um, it was like uh, the the daughter ended up, the daughter of some person ended up missing. You had to go out of your way to find her, but it turns out that she was with the captain and all was really well. Here, from what it looks like, to me anyways, you could go to your room, sleep on your bed, and then suddenly you're in Lily Cove. Because again, you're only you're not sailing to a new area. It's not like in Fire Red Leaf Green where when you can actually go and actually sail, you know, there's, what was it, Island A, B, and C is what they were called or something like that. You know, a, a different area you can go to or like in Gen 2 where it's like, oh, you can go back to the Kanto region and see all this new stuff. Here it's just, oh, you're just going from Slateport City to Lily Cove City. That's really about it. So because of that, there's really not much to even really do on the boat. Now, there, don't get me wrong. There's also, as we saw with, you know, the creepy guy that's been stalking us like crazy. Um, we do have the Battle Frontier later on. So technically, yes, there is another place you can go to. The thing is, if you choose to go to the Battle Frontier, you just kind of end up there. There isn't the whole entire, oh, you can just fight all these trainers on the boat on your way to the Battle Frontier. No, you just kind of go there. Um, the only time you really ever go against the trainers is if you are going between Slateport and Lily Cove cities. But again, it's optional because if you just go to your room, which for some reason I'm just now noticing our bedspread is blue and everyone else has green. Why is it so, like, why are we so special that we get the blue bedspread? I don't know. But based on what I've seen, it looks like you could just go straight to your bed, go to sleep. And when you wake up, you'll be in the next city. You don't really ha even have to face any of the trainers. And because there's no storyline on this particular boat, there's nothing really what you need to do and the trainers you can go against them get yourself some free levels they are relatively within like what the mid 40s or something like that basically what you expect the trainers to be at when actually on a boat it, it's not like suddenly once you beat the elite four all the trainers you go against are going to be miles harder there's only one trainer that's going to be miles harder that we have to prep for but just about everybody else there's they're relatively where they're supposed to be at you know it's supposed to be the long grinding process you know they're a little bit weak but it's more about endurance above everything else and once again, you can go back to your bed, sleep on your bed. It'll get your Pokemon all back to full health so you can continue on with that endurance marathon. But again, because they're only in like the mid-40s or so, 
it's not really going to be a problem, especially because we had to overgrind for the Elite Four anyways in order to stand a chance against Champion Wallace. I swear, I, it wasn't for the fact that I didn't have a good grass type to take advantage of him. I, I, I feel like it could have gone a little bit better, or just that Gyarados being just so fast. Uh, and knowing Earthquake too, my god, it was it was a bit of a problem. And I kind of wish that I had, uh, what is it, that uh, Magnet Rise? But I don't think that was introduced until Gen 4 anyways. But the Magnet Rise ability um, with um, Magneton where you use it and it'll give you the ability to levitate. So then ground moves don't hit you. But even then I still think Gyarados would have been faster anyways and would have just completely clowned me. And yeah, just a lot of things didn't really go exactly as planned. But hey, that's exactly how it goes sometimes, right? But because there's really not much going on within the SS, whatever the hell this boat name is, uh, there's going to be a couple items you can get, like Snatch, which is actually a really cool concept of a move. It's just one that you really have to get into the mind of your opponent for. Basically, what Snatch does is if you're and i guess it works also for your ally pokemon based on what i read because i was reading about what snatch did because i never actually used it before never really cared but basically what it is is if someone's using a boosting move by using snatch you take that boost from them so in other words and i think it gains priority too so that would have been a move that would have been perfect for sableye to have be, uh, though I'm pretty sure Gyarados still probably would have used Earthquake on Sableye instead of Dragon Dance. But in case Gyarados did try to use Dragon Dance, if I had used Snatch, then I get the Dragon Dance, is what it reads to me anyways. By the way, if that person and his Wingle look familiar, it's because it's the other guy that had the boat with his Pico and whatnot. So that's why they probably look a little bit familiar, in case you are wondering on that. But yeah, based on what I read, it just it takes the boost of another Pokemon's move and applies it to themselves. So that would have been really good when it came to the Dragon Dance. Unfortunately, have no ability to get into after being the Elite Four. So, yeah, that kind of sucks. But because there's not really much else going on the boat, one of the next areas we will be going to in this part is going to be the Safari Zone. Because, if you remember correctly, we did one part of the Safari Zone and then had to go against the Elite Four uh, in order to access the rest of it. I should have I should have worded it as you went to the Safari Zone, but another place was blocked off is because you have to beat the Elite Four in order to get to that other area. Now, I don't remember if I went over the entirety of what you could run into in the Safari Zone, um, but because it's been a while, I'm going to go through all of it again. And because that's six areas worth, and there is quite a bit to go through. Again, there's not really much going else on the boat, so we might as well get on right through it. So when we go to the Safari Zone to get all the items of those uh, Area 5 and 6, also Area 4 because I didn't have, I had the mock bike and I needed the acro bike for Area 4, but, you know, it's whatever. Uh, so if you're in Area 1, and if I remember correctly, the way that the areas are set up, I believe Area 1 is like the bottom left area, Area 2 is on the top, Area 3 is the first area that you start off in, Area 4 is to the north of that, and then Area 5 and 6, Area 5 is the first area you go to where the construction was um, on the lower right area, and then Area 6 is on the top right, if I'm not mistaken. And if I mess that up, Area 1 is on the top left. I think I probably accidentally said a top right, but anyways. So area one, when you're going through all the grass and whatnot, and this is for all three versions for all of them, except for area five and six, because those were Emerald exclusive. But area number one, you have a 5% chance of running into a Pikachu, 40% chance you'll run into an Oddish, 5% chance you'll run into a Gloom, 10% chance for a Do Doduo, 10% chance for a Natu, 20% chance for a Girafferig, and a 10% chance for a Wobbuffet. Pretty good odds of what you can get. Girafferig, in my opinion, is one of the better ones to get there. Having a normal Psychic type is pretty good. Because then if you go against a ghost type, well, the ghost type's not going to be able to take advantage of the type effectiveness against um, the psychic side of you because you're also part normal. So that's pretty good. Um, and if you really want a Zatu, which originally I was going to get, but I decided to get Soul Rock instead. Um, but if you really want a Zatu, that's where you can get your 10% chance of running into a Natu. Area number two on the bottom left, and I think area one and two could be flipped if I'm not mistaken. I'm, I don't 100% remember. Roughly about the same, 5% chance for the Pikachu. In fact, actually looking through it, it's all exactly the same, but it does introduce surfing. If you are surfing in area number two, you have a 100% chance of running into a Psyduck. So there you go. That's how you get your Gold Duck if you so want it. 
If you are fishing in area number two, you have a 30% chance for a gold dean, 70% chance for magic card with the old rod. Good rod gives you a 40% chance for a gold dean with a 60% chance for a magic card. And with the super rod, it's an 80% chance for a gold dean with a 20% chance that it is a sea king. Area number three, which again, I believe is the area that you do start out in when you first enter in the safari zone. Walking in the grass gives you a 30% chance for an Oddish with a 15% chance for a Gloom, 15% chance for a Doe Duo with a 5% chance for a Dodrio, 30% chance for a Rhyhorn, and a 5% chance for a Pincer. Gotta get that boy Rhyhorn on there. Basically, the Gen 3 version of that is the Agron, which is a Steel Rock type. Unfortunately, I don't think Steel type moves have that good of a move set, in my opinion. And you guys already know how I feel about rock types in general. So having, I don't think Agron's really all that great. Whereas, and, and defensively a little bit better because again, having the steel and the rock type makes it so that you can almost get hit by nothing. But in a lot of cases like those, it's not even going to matter. They're not going to be taking that many hits anyways. But with Rhyhorn getting the ground, rock type, being able to use Earthquake. Yeah, you're times four a week to grass and water and all that stuff. So again, going against wall, it's not exactly the best, but if you do want yourself a ride on, that's how you're going to go to get it and pincer in case you want a grass type. Surfing along the area of round number three, you have a 95% chance for a side up with a 5% chance that it could be the gold duck, gold duck. And if you are fishing, they are the same as in area number two. Area number four, north of where you first enter in, gives you a 30% chance for an Oddish with a 15% chance for a Gloom, 15% chance for a Natu with a 5% chance it's a Zatu, 5% chance for a Heracross, and 30% chance for a Famfy. And if you use Rock Smash, it's always going to be a Geodude you're going to run into. Heracross, oh my god, I absolutely despise Heracross when doing gen 2 and trying to again doing a little bit of trying to complete the pokedex heracross was a bitch to try and headbutt out of the trees luckily for here it's a lot easier a five percent chance of running into him not exactly all that bad really and then famfy pretty good um i've never really used famfy at all or its evolution of which i'm currently blanking on but nah, that's whatever Area number five. So once you actually open up after you've beaten the Elite Four, again, this is Emerald only because only areas one and four are through in Ruby and Sapphire. You have a 5% chance to run into a Hoot Hoot, 10% chance for a Spinarak, 30% chance for a Mareep, 10% chance for an Apom, 30% chance for a Sunskern, 5% chance for a Gligar, 5% chance for a Snubble, and 5% chance for a Stantler. If you're surfing in area number five, you have a 39% chance for a Meryl, 60% chance for a Wooper with a 1% chance it's a quagsire and if you are fishing in area number five i believe nope it is a little bit different 30 percent chance for a golding with a 70 percent chance for a magic carp with the old rod 20 percent chance for a golding with a 60 percent chance for a magic carp and five percent chance for a remoraid with the good rod and with the super rod it is a 40 percent chance for a golding with a 59 percent chance for a remoraid and a one percent chance for an octillery if you can already kind of see what it's going into in the Emerald version, the extra area that is blocked off until you don't the Elite Four is the area you need in case you want to actually do the National Pokedex. Every single Pokemon they just read up were numerous amounts of Gen 2 Pokemon. And my boy Mareep, you know, I know that uh, Mareep's not exactly all that good because Ampharos is not all that good. I don't give a damn. I love it. And I know my boy James, he loves Ariato, so he'd be very happy to get himself a spinner rack right over there. If anything, he'd just be upset that he couldn't use Ariados in the run of Gen number 3. And I agree with him. I love Ariados. If there is one bug type that is my favorite above all other bug types, it is Ariados. There's something about the look of Ariados. And spinner rack just looks really cute too, but Ariados, that's my boy. That's my bug poison type if I'm ever going to be looking for one. And then finally in area number six, just taking a quick look, it looks like they're close to the same, but not exactly. You have a 5% chance for a Hoot Hoot with a 10% chance for a Ladybug, 30% chance for an Apom, 10% chance for a Sunskern, 5% chance for a Pineco, 30% chance for a Teddy Ursa, 5% chance for a Houndor, 5% chance for a Milk Tank, and with the Rock Spash, you have the 100% chance to get the best Pokemon in all of Pokemon, the Shuckle. I mean, come on, we all love Shuckle. And everyone's always thought about using Shuckle's defense and special defense in a certain way. Uh, I can't remember what it is. That one move where you get to swap your attack and defense, so then suddenly he's got, like, the biggest max attack in both stats, but he's got no defense and already had garbage time. Um, or had garbage time health to begin with, so whatever. And, yeah, that's everything you can catch within the Safari Zone area. So... And 
Ladybug's okay. I never really was a big fan of Ladybug. But Pineco is really good because I still think Fortress is really good of a Pokemon. I know that it's like really good to have in competitive, but I've always liked Pineco because if things go wrong, you can just use Explosion and call it good. And I love me some Houndoom. I don't believe Houndoom's that good in the competitive scene, whatever, but I think that Houndoom is really damn good in my opinion. Uh, at least really damn cool, I should say. I wouldn't say good, just really cool. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of other fire types that's just a lot better, but I love me some Houndoom. And if it wasn't for the fact that I mostly get the fire types uh, as a starting Pokemon, I would totally go on my way and get myself a Houndoom whenever I could. Gen 2, Centaquil is my favorite starter Pokemon ever. If it wasn't for that, Houndoom would be my boy all the time. Man, did it hurt me so much for that to happen because I made a couple of missed turns that I knew I would do and I tried to prep ahead of time to avoid those missed turns but I knew like I, I I fell for them and I'm like crap I'm gonna make it to the very end and then just miss one item and sure enough that's exactly what happened I missed one item uh, on the end of route num uh, not route but um area number six of the safari zone feels bad but hey what can you do and that's it. Um, that's the entire the Safari Zone. That's all the Pokemon you can get in it in case you were trying to do the National Pokedex. Or the first time you came across the Safari Zone, you know, if you did want to get like a Heracross or a Pinsir or a Wobbuffet or a Zatu, which again, originally I was planning on doing. Um, that's exactly what you'll look to do. And that's what the SS, whatever the hell the name is, I'm just going to call it once again, the SS Still Easy Trainers in memory of my SS Easy Trainer video of Pokemon Gold walkthrough. And aside from this, uh, the next episode is going to be a very interesting one. We're going to be going out of our way to showcase how to get the legendary Pokemon and finish up uh, the rest of the post commentary because we, like I said, we've got the legendaries that we're going to be catching. There's a legendary trainer that we're going to be going against. And then after that, it's all about the battle tents and the battle frontier and should be really good. But there's going to be another interesting reason, uh, not, a, not interesting reason, but something interesting happens in the very next part that I did not expect. And it made me laugh quite a bit. And you'll see exactly what I mean when it happens. But until then, I hope you folks enjoy the rest of your evenings and we'll catch you all in the next part.